Yeah, man, everyone, it's Shadow Cat here, and, uh, yeah, we're... So today, we're doing, uh, Not It, Spookiest Edition, and if, the uh, everything goes well, that'd be another, uh, one done. So, we got Potion here. Yay, Potion, Potion, Potion. Um, I don't know how long my, uh, recorder has this time around, because my storage is a little... Uh, backed up. But it is what it is. The one thing, so don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe so we can reach 40 subscribers. Yeah. Um, before we start this, I have to say that this side right here is only playing. This side, not so much. But this ear was off before I started. Now it's on again. Or only, no, it's on. It's on. Both of them are on. Yep. Both of my ears are on now. Yep. All right. So here we go. This is not. This is not it. Spookiest edition. This is a weird little uh, creepy game. Well, not creepy. It's just good. But let's get into it. I don't have to explain it. So this is a girl named Kate that moved into a house that apparently is haunted and was haunted and shit but you know it is what it is um i can save right yeah oh my god i got my save files i have i have like infinite i have like 99 saves oh my god all right enough of the stalling and shit <laughs> all right so like i said this is kate she's the main character and, uh, I mean, it has multiple choice in this, too, so I'm gonna be aware of that. So, well, here we are. I made it just in time for Halloween, too. <laughs> Despite today being Halloween, I don't see any decorations as I drive into town. Maybe they aren't big on Halloween here? I pull into the driveway of my new home to get out and get out. My furniture was already delivered, so all that's left is for me to officially move in. I love it when you just like, you have all your stuff all like set up and ready to go, all delivered and shit. That's, takes up all the hassle of having to drive back and forth. All I need to pick up a few things at the store. I might as well take care of that now. Oh. <laughs> this town is small. This town is small. So it's just a quick walk to the grocery store. To my surprise, it's closed. Oh, that's very unfortunate. <laughs> I didn't think stores closed for Halloween. Come to think of it, the streets seem pretty empty. It's a small rural town. The main reason I chose chose it, but it didn't seem quite this empty when I saw the house before. There's a strange lifeless feeling in the air. As though the town is almost abandoned. Right, there's some voice audio. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it because all the fucking. All the freaking uh, noise in the background. <laughs> Most people have already left. Cool, alright. I turn around to see the. turn around at the sound of the voice and find myself facing a middle-aged man, wow, uh, who looks rather puzzled to see me. Uh, sorry, what? Hmm. Who are you? Are you a visitor? Actually, I just moved here. I don't even know if the, I mean, it's only here. I don't know why it's not playing here either. Very weird. 
want it higher. Oh, that explains it. You see, I'm the mayor, so I'm used to recognizing everyone here. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's much louder. It is much louder. I see. You picked a poor time to move in. Everyone evacuates on Halloween because of the curse. The curse. <laughs> Oh my god, Curse Wish just imprints her name everywhere, doesn't she? That woman is crazy. I'm gonna do savies. I'm gonna go back and forth on these uh, choices, just in case if there's only like two. Uh, what curse? Oh dear! Whisper, why? Uh, told me what? I thought I made it clear that everyone was supposed to... Oh, you bought the McKellis house, did you? Yes, why? <laughs> Old McKellis was intent on getting out of here. No wonder he didn't tell you about the curse. Probably thought you wouldn't buy the place if you knew. I still don't understand what's going on. You and me both. <laughs> Let me explain. Many years ago, there was a... a tragic death. Let's leave it at that. Sure. Uh-huh. Ever since then, this area has been cursed. Right. How exactly? On Halloween, his spirit returns. He seeks to possess someone and then gets his revenge on the town. Who's he? Um, I'm gonna save here because I want to do the other, uh... Oh, no. What's the point of saving if you can't re fucking... weird. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, that has nothing to do with me. Can't the spirit leave the town? Why Halloween? That has nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> he is indiscriminate when he selects victims. He won't spare you just because you're a stranger here. Guess you can't expect too much compassion from a vengeful spirit, huh? Right. Exactly. You are in as much danger as many of us. Am I actually supposed to believe this story? Or is it just a prank they play on newcomers? Excuse me, I need to make my own preparations to leave. Right. <laughs> he hurries past he very fast past me, nearing nearly knocking me over on his I, in his haste to get back. To get by, sorry, jeez, I can't read. <laughs> but runs down the street. It all but runs down the street. That was extremely weird. It doesn't seem like people have left town though. There's gotta be something else I can ask someone else I can ask to find out what's going on. Uh, police station or the church? Let's go to the church. A church, a church seems like a good place to ask about curses. So I head to the church. That's the church right here. At this giant building, white building. It's nearly empty, although not entirely. Oh, hello. Are you here to pray before leaving as well? Praying before leaving? Not exactly. Um, I'm trying to figure That's out what's better. going on. I just moved here. It's good to meet you. I'm Rita. Oh my, Rita. you had a bad day to arrive, didn't you? 
I didn't realize moving in on Halloween would be an issue. I'm Katie, by the way. You mean no one warned you about the curse? How terrible! Right. Huh. It really is a curse, then. <laughs> yes, and if you know what's good for you, you'll get out with the rest of us. This is all so strange. You have doubts, do you? I have to admit I do, yes. Well, just head over to the Historical Society, and you'll learn everything you need to know about the curse. Thank you. The Historical Society, huh? Guess I should head over and try to figure this out. Figure this thing out. I find the Historical Society easily, and to my surprise, it's still Can open. Can I help you with something? Considering the way the rest of the town is right now, I'm surprised anyone's here. I'll be closing up soon. I don't believe we've met before, though. I'm Willow. Oh, this is Willow, right. Katie, <laughs> I just moved into town. Oh my. Uh, today of all days. I was told I could learn more about the curse if I came here. That's right. This is the Historical Society, after all. So you can find everything related to our town's history here. Right. And it's really true that people evacuate the town every Halloween? Yes, it's been going on so long now. I'm amazed people around the country don't know about it. This is weird. No, you and me both, girl. Learn about the curse's origins. Look for evidence of the curse. You know enough already. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Let's learn about the origin. Where should I look to find information about the curse's origins? Oh, you'll want to look all the way in the back at the newspaper articles from the 1800s. That long, huh? Long ago, huh? Sorry. <laughs> I head to the back of the room. There are documents and records of the town's history all over the place, but they can become fewer and fewer the deeper I go. Soon I reach a small section marked 1800s. There's very little here, but a few yellowed newspaper articles have been carefully preserved. The first one is from November 1st, 1832. Hermit hiding on ha Halloween. 29 year old Matthew Hoyer, Hayer, known to be the Known to be a recluse by his neighbors, was reported missing la late last night. Halloween was Halloween after his house was found unexpectedly empty by trick or traders attempting to break in. Police discourage the act of trespassing but are asked anyone are but are asking anyone with any information on his whereabouts to report to the sheriff's office I moved to the next newspaper November 14th 1832 Matthew Hayer found dead after vanishing on Halloween police had no leads on the disappearing disappearance of 29 year old Matthew Ayer until last night. His body was discovered in the woods, roughly a quarter mile outside of town, by police just after nightfall. Evidence suggests Ayer had been beaten to death at an unknown location before being transported to the place he was eventually found. The investigation is ongoing. 
another article from December 6, 1832 is carefully preserved beneath it. Cold case. Cold case. It has been almost four weeks since the death of 29-year-old Matthew Hare. And the police are still searching for s suspects in his suspended murder. Here was Rickleseev, the sheriff said, questioned about their lack of progress. This makes it difficult to pin down his movements or any enemies he might have had. Hare had been con considered strange by many local residents, and when asked, residents admit to being a little relieved he no longer around. He's no longer around. So after the After a month of searching, they didn't even have leads on these and were considered dropping the case. The next few articles have nothing to do with the case, only town's history, but at least I spot the name Hoyer again. Hayer again. What? This one is from October 20th, 1833. That's almost a year later. <clears throat> Sorry. Hayer's murder is finally caught. After a year, he's there's been a new break in the Matthew Hayer, Hayer murder investigation. A group of five people, four teenagers and one adult, came across came forward Monday to confess to assaulting and murdering Hayer almost a year ago. Well, it took him a year to figure that out. Jesus. To confess, I mean, jeez. The attack, the attack took place earlier that Halloween night while Hayer was walking down the road back towards his house from downtown after which they relocated his body into the woods. Some of the uh, attackers state they came forward with a confession so long after the incident because, in their words, Hare placed a curse on this town. According to the attackers, Hare used his dying breath to curse not only his killers, but the entire town blaming everyone here for what had happened to him and that he swore to get his revenge the next Halloween. There was something about there was something about there was something weird about him. One boy confessed. I honestly think he meant it. The police have yet to commit on any supernatural imp locations of Hoyer's death. Finally, there's one more right beside it. Finally, there's one more right beside it from November 1st, 1833. Revenge from the Grave. The five culprits in the Hoyer murder uh, who had been awaiting trial died late last night. The guard, the guard on duty, shot all five of them before killing himself. The officer had no known ties to Matthew Hayer, so his motives were unknown. Are unknown. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Police de declared the decline. To comment on the possibility that this was Matthew Hayer's promised revenge. So that's how it all started, huh? Well, 
Where should I look to find evidence of the curse? Evidence? That would be scattered throughout our history. Ten years ago is when the evacuation started. Ten years ago, huh? Most of the document records on display seems to be highlighting the high points or low points. In this case, low points in this case of the town's history. There's a man nearby reading some of them, but he doesn't look up as I pass. Finally, I reach a framed notice from about 10 years earlier. Stay safe this Halloween. In light of in, in in light of in post, in light of incidents throughout the years, just asking suggesting Matthew Carrier's curse on the town is real and will affect anyone within the town's borders. It is requested that anyone evac evacuate on October thirty first. This evacuation is voluntary but highly encouraged police will help pay for any expenses the curse appears to be restricted to the town and its immediate surroundings going at least 10 miles away is recommended It will be safe to return to town on November 1st. The police... The police pay for the people's expenses? Expenses? They are really serious about this. Near the... Near the notice, there's a magazine article titled The Halloween Curse. How a dead man terrified citizens of a small town. Do curses really exist? The inhabitants of this small town would tell you yes, without a doubt. The story of this curse goes back to a man who died centuries earlier on Halloween and supposedly cursed the entire town with desires for revenge. Ever since then, strange, tragic incidents have helped have happened on Halloween. A person guard, a prison guard who murdered all of his prisoners before turning the gun to himself. A mother who killed her children and two neighbors. A stranger from out of town who went on a shooting spree. The circumstances are always different, but in every ca every case, the culprit claims to have no memory of the crime. As each Halloween passed with a new tragedy, people began to whisper it as whisper it was the dead man's spirit possessing a person every year, each year to extract revenge. That matches what the mayor told me. The rest of the article related to the curse document, the incidents mentioned in the magazine article along among others. If something awful happened, Every Halloween, I guess it's not surprising they started to believe in the curse. We're not gonna reread the article. That's stupid. I think I understand enough now. Good, because it's actually about closing time. Okay, that's very fortunate. Getting out of town to avoid the curse, huh? Actually, I don't believe in the curse. How do you explain all the evidence? Evidence? 
It's all circumstantial. A few bad things happen on Halloween and people see a pattern where there isn't one. Didn't something happen every Halloween though? Coincidence. Besides, once people started talking about the curse, that must have fed into it. Yeah, yeah, she's not wrong. Uh... I mean, I deal with Curse Witch, so is it right for me to say I don't believe it in either? Right now, I'm not. There might be something to it, though. I'm not surprised you say that. Most people believe in it, after all. I've gotten used to being the only one who doubts. Right. Doesn't it bother you? Not really. Other people's superstition can't change what I believe. How can you say that? Oh. Okay. Hi. <laughs> the man who had been reading historical documents turned a turns away from the displays to fix us with a furious glare. The curse exists. Doubting the curse is asking for trouble. Calm down, Joseph. Calm down? Disbelief like yours is what gets people killed. I'm going to evacuate, so don't worry. You evacuate even though you don't believe in the curse? What else am I going to do? Spend the night all alone in an abandoned town? With everyone else gone, then there would be legitimate things to worry about. Hmm. That is true. So if you need a ride, you're welcome to come with me. I usually carpool with my friend Rita. Where do people go, anyway? Some visit relatives, some plan trips for this time of year. Most just go to the next town over, though. It's about 20 miles away. The motel there loves the business. <laughs> I'll bet. The door opens and a woman I met in the church pokes her head in. If anyone needs to carpool with me, you'd better hurry. Nearly everyone else is gone, and I won't wait much longer. That's Rita. Since I don't drive, I usually go with her. D don't leave without me! Right. He races out of the historic society, and Willow and I follow. <laughs> what in the world? My tires! She stares at horror at the car parked along the curb. Two of its tires are flat. It was just fun a minute ago. Oh God, it's happening already. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. We're all going to die. <laughs> Take my car. He followed me to, up to the road around my new house. I can't say I'm crazy about this, but they're so upset I'd feel bad for helping them out. Not helping them out. When we reach the driveway, I glance up at my house. I haven't even gotten to properly move in yet. Under the circumstances, however, it seems my official move-in will have to wait until a little longer. I reach into my coat, pocket, for my keys. Is something wrong? My keys are gone! What? First my tires, now the keys. It started already. No, 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 no! Okay, well that's crazy. Uh, 
logical explanation? I mean, sure. Yes, I'm sure there is. Such a I was a little weirded out when I got here, so I probably dropped them without realizing. Oh, sure, sure. Right. You just happened to drop your keys and notice on today of all days. Hey, it makes a lot more sense than a curse. Hey, do you hear that? What? It sounds like a car engine running somewhere. A car? And it's running? take off together in the direction of the sound, Willow and I follow. I'll be happy to get out of here. Things are getting just a little too weird for me. We find it, find the car downtown. It's parked outside of the town, outside a small brick building with a sign that declares it to be the local the inn. Must be inside. I just hope it isn't the killer. As a, as a group, we walk towards the indoors. Oh, hey, it's them. A man is standing just inside the inn. Finally, some people. Say, what's going on around here? Who are you? Can we use your car? What's with you guys? You must be from out of town, aren't you? Yeah, the name is Vinny. Came here looking for a room, but there's uh, no one here. This isn't in, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But everyone else is already evacuated. We're the only ones left. Whoa! Evacuated? What's going on? Oh, him too. Let's just go. Yeah. Vinny, yeah, let's use your car. <laughs> We're seriously evacuating the town? Sure, fine. You guys know more about it than I do. That's true. Uh shaking his head, he walks in and doors and pushes. Huh? Is something wrong? Door won't open. Must have it backwards. He pulls the door instead, but it still doesn't what budge. What the? You're telling me we're locked in? What? <laughs> Joseph pulls past all. He pushes past all of us and throws himself against the door. He struggles with it frequently, trying to get it open. Oh, God, Panicking please. won't help. We need to deal with this logically. Logically? Are you insane? We're still here on Halloween, and someone locked us in! How do you lock somebody in? First, Rita tries Rita's tires, then my keys, and now this. Oh no. It's really starting to seem like someone is trying to keep us here. It's happened already. He's already possessed someone, and we're his next victims! Accidentally? How many times have you accidentally locked yourself in a public building? <laughs> Katie's right. It's strange. But when we rushed in here, we must have locked it by mistake. Could someone fill me in? Did he just say someone was possessed? Why is Fanny's voice like so loud? Everyone else is like so low pitched. It's very weird. As if you don't know. Huh? Joseph, what are you implying? That it's him! That's what I'm implying! He's the one who lured us in here! Whoa, lured? Get real! If it wasn't for you, at least we could leave on foot. Now we... A slow crack somewhere above us make him fall silent. We all exchange glances. That sound... It sounded like someone walking around upstairs. Another crack comes from above us, followed by a thud. Someone, someone else is in here. 
and no one came when I rang the bell. It might have just been the wind knocking the shutters around. But wait, we wait, but there aren't any further sounds from the second floor. Should we go see? No! Honestly, I think we should focus on trying to get this door open. That's our real problem. Well, I'm going upstairs. Is anyone coming with me? Uh... Hmm. This is one of those ones where it's crazy to like, I'm like, it's one of those ones where you have to try and keep everyone alive. It's just very hard to do in this part, but I'll try. I'll investigate with her. I'll go too. Thank you, dear. Right. Leaving Willow, Joseph, and Vinny to work on the door. We did not add to the inn's creepy staircase. Uh, at the top of the stairs, the hallway goes in two different directions. Because in two directions, with each wing of the inn having four rooms. Hello? There's no answer. The second floor is silent. We should probably check the rooms, just to be sure. I agree. Do you think we should stick together? We probably can cover more ground if we split up. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is a tough one. This one's getting tough. Uh, we should stick together. We should split up. Usually you're not supposed to split up, but mm, let's stick together. It's probably safest if we stick together. Besides, there aren't that many rooms. That's true. Good point. Hmm. I suppose we should start from the beginning with room one. I hardly it hardly matters in an in this size. We walk together into the left wing and open the door. First door. Small inn looks cozy and also completely abandoned. Uh, we check the second room with the same results. We open the door to him and look inside. Oh. What the? A police officer. That's about the last thing I expected. So low, dude. Officer Mike, why? Why are you so? Why is this voice so low? I'm sorry. This is this is stupid and low. Frank fell down in one of the rooms and hurt his leg. I've been searching the other rooms to find something he could use for a crutch. Just enough to get him downstairs and outside. Frank? He's the innkeeper. Well, you might as well stop looking for a crutch until we know if we can get that door open. The indoor's locked, and we're stuck inside unless we can get it open. That's odd. Let's go talk to Frank. Mike leads us to the other wing, into room five. Inside, a nearly elderly man is sitting on the bed. Which is when I parked in and tossed a set of keys in the bag.
Yep. Yeah. You're sure? Yep. Yeah. And there's no way to lock the inn without them? Yep. Yeah. Wait here, Frank. I'll be back for you as soon as we get the door open. <laughs> as if I'm going anywhere. Right. Downstairs in the lobby, Willow and Vinny are standing by the door. Doesn't look like they're made any progress. Joseph. Paces nearby, looking miserable and even more distressed than when we left. And look up. Officer Mike! It turns out he was the one we heard. He was helping Frank. Frank's here too? He hurt his leg, so he's still upstairs for now. However, he has the keys to the front door, so we should be able to get out of here. Right. But if what Frank said is true, it doesn't make sense that the door wouldn't have locked us behind us. Keys? You have keys? We're saved! Mike hurries down to the stairs and over to the door while Rita and I follow. He takes a large brass key and inserts it to the lock. It fits smoothly. Then he twists and tries to open the door. Nothing happens. That's strange. He tries again. It works, but it still won't open. Okay. Um, I'm not fully sure what I am on the time right now because I can't tell. But I'm going to end here. So don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe so we can reach 40 subscribers. And if this video is end up being short, then that's okay too. So, yep. Also, and if you don't, uh, potions here will not give you any candy. <laughs> Oh, shit.